I think it's probably something you underestimate. I think as players sometimes just the little things um, and how it can impact, uh, particularly on, on younger on younger kids. It's only going to take you maybe 20 seconds or 30 seconds to sign it or take, do the video or whatever. And that, that kid or that person will have that for the rest of their lives, you know. Well, it's crack man. All good, all good. Um, here for obviously Community Includes Everybody Super Value campaign. Seth and David have been involved for a year or two now. Welcome to the squad. Thank <laughs> yeah. you, thank you. It's um, good to be here. I just thought, I suppose, opening wise, be interesting to maybe hear from you your career path so far in the GA, where it started, and how you've ended up where you are, I suppose. Well, I joined Crokes, Kimfo Crokes, my local club, probably a bit later than most. I think I was. Um, Maybe 10 when I started, I was a soccer man, probably first and foremost. So yeah, started with there, made my way up to, to minor with Crokes, and then I suppose the turning point was was Dublin minor. But uh, here in 2011, we lost the All-Ireland final um, against Tipperary that year, the same day uh, Dublin beat Kerry. Um, and that was the kind of moment where I said I'd kind of switch paths here and dedicate myself to, to get to football. And, yeah, went through the kind of under twenty one teams then, and uh, and onto onto seniors in twenty thirteen. So it's been a, a fun journey since. There's an old smile on his face when he said Dublin by Kerry. You might not, <laughs> you might have missed it. Um, but look, um, a similar path to most, I suppose. Um, there's been rivalry games. There's been plenty of games between all three counties, I suppose. Is there anything in particular maybe that stands out to you? Big days here. Yeah, I suppose your first time playing here. My first time playing here was with uh, school actually in the Hogan Cup final. Uh, we played against Saint P with St. Brendan's College, we played against St. Pat's Mahara and we, we were lucky enough to win on the day. So yeah, I suppose the first time playing here always stands out. Probably the first all Ireland, and then against the lads in 2019, the, the drawn game, uh, just the atmosphere and stuff like that. Um, getting your first taste of, of playing in an All-Ireland, um, they're probably the ones that would stand out the most, yeah. Yeah, it's a huge experience. Um, what about yourself? Any big standout yeah, games? Thanks. Obviously last year. Yeah, last year was a, a, a particularly special one. I think just given the, the couple of years that had, that had gone before, it, the change in kind of fortune, I guess, for the team, and then we kind of started off quite slowly and, uh, and managed to kind of turn things around. I think the twenty nineteen final, especially uh, that first one, stands out as one that we kind of probably got away with with uh, with Johnny getting that red card in the, in the first half and you boys getting the lead late on and and um, and then. Uh, being able to kind of claw that back and, and work ourselves to uh, to a replay was one that we'd uh, we look back on. Well, but probably think we got lucky, but it was it was definitely a good game. Yeah, winning is winning, regardless yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, something I actually think about a fair bit. You've obviously the same growing up, uh, all in different counties, but growing up watching football. I know you said you started a little bit late, tens, not really too no. late now, but <laughs> like you're watching the Dublin team, you're watching the Kerry team. I obviously watched the Mayo lads, even Ballina lads in particular playing for their county, was there anybody maybe that stood out to you as you were growing up, as you were watching? Yeah, like when I was growing up, I suppose it was it was that Kerry team of Gooch and Declan O'Sullivan, Danny and all those lads. Um, so like they were all heroes. I suppose look to Gooch in particular, he was he's obviously probably the best forward to ever play the game. Um, I would say anyway, maybe I might be biased, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so probably the likes of them. I think they were in all Ireland's 10 years in a row or something along those lines. Um, so I remember going to be at the majority of those other Ireland's. You couldn't but love football and carry at the time when, when they were so successful, do you know? Yeah, I didn't know much of football even when I was a young lad. It wasn't a big forte for me, but I just remember Kerry's dominance. Yeah. I remember everybody around the, the country was in awe of the, them lads. Uh, what about yourself? Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say I, I look up to the likes of Colin Cooper as well now, big time when I was a young player. I think the, the lefty, uh, left-footed player is definitely uh, just the... The quality he, he brought and it was something so unique I think at the time and um, yeah my f first uh, game against Kerry here in 2013 was pl playing against him it was like uh, come kind of full circle for me and I remember asking for his jersey after that game and uh, that's still somewhere somewhere at home in, in a basket in, in my house but um, and then yeah, closer to home I, th I think someone else that would have I really looked up to was the likes of Ray Cosgrove who would have been a brilliant player for, for Dublin and those Kind of mid two thousands, Kimco Crokes player as well, and um, probably 
part of an unlucky few on, on that era to have gotten kind of close to all Ireland finals, but never quite made it. So, though I say, yeah, Kazi, even Mark Vaughan, um, those lads would have looked up to as well. Yeah, even at that, in the, in the hide, the last two were kind of laughing. We look, look at all the, the young lads and young ladies looking up, I suppose, where we were looking up to lads that are playing at the moment there. They all have 13, 14 or 15 on the back of the jersey. There's not too many that are looking yeah, to go into the dungeon in the full back line. <laughs> but um, I, in fairness, we, I was very fortunate. We had Jer Calf, I suppose, in the club, who was the full back for me for a long time and arguably one of the best best ever and David Clark in goal and, and a few others to look up to. So we were we were spoiled with great footballers over the years too, um, to, I suppose, keep an eye on and, and, and be inspired by, I suppose. And, it comes, I suppose, it's a great position to be in for all of us um, and something to remember, I suppose, that we're setting an example and today we get to yeah. talk about something away, well, somewhat away from the football field, but probably a little bit more important and that's the, the kind of inclusion aspect of things, what we can do, how we see it. So I'd be interested to maybe hear your take on that. Um, mm -hmm. Where do you think we are in the GAA? I suppose GAA clubs has always been a place where... Um, People can come together and kind of feel feel safe and secure and kind of where kind of communities grow. I think that's like from the kind of founding charter of the GA. That's what it's always been about. But I think definitely in in recent years, as Ireland, um, all counties across Ireland really kind of grown kind of more uh, more diverse, multicultural, multinational. I think clubs are still kind of been that that point where um, I suppose people can come together and, and sport has been a great kind of driver for fostering community and uh, connections between people um, so yeah I think definitely in in recent years uh, in my own club like we've kind of developed a kind of an inclusion group for for younger kids with kind of with physical or intellectual disabilities um, helping coaches and parents kind of understand how, how to how to be more inclusive uh, for for younger kids and adults as well so I think that's definitely something that's I suppose clubs and, and people in general have become more aware of in, in recent years. That's been good to see. Yeah, and I suppose, I think it'd be fair to say that Dublin, being diverse, like, probably a lot earlier than, say, my own Kerry, mm. were a little bit more rural, so you, a lot more people, I suppose, coming into Dublin. You don't mind taking in lads from other counties if, they, if you can get them either. <laughs> so, um, you're probably a little bit, of, probably further down the tracks in that. Um, and I think I, I've always said that I think that the GA are a really, really positive space. Our club yeah. in particular, like like you said, the same, I suppose, it's a space for everyone. Um, I certainly see it that way. I think it's kind of a pillar of our community. Same Balone Kerry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you said, I suppose, just by, by the nature of where, we, where we're located, um, it's, it's, of course, it's, it's diverse and there's, there's, there's a um, load of different nationalities, of course, but it's, it's probably a bit further a bit less down the tracks i should say um but yeah absolutely i mean the, like i suppose the ga the great thing about the ga is if you have a family member involved generally the rest of your family are, are going to be involved in some sense if it's your parents that are involved in committees or maybe they're giving out tea and sandwiches after games or you've brothers and sisters maybe who start on the younger teams because they look up to their brother and sister who's playing so um like it's, it's brilliant once you get once you can get someone from, a f from 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 those kind of families in um, because the rest of the family then also feels like they have a role uh, within the club which is which is the great thing about the club in the sense that there is there is there is something for everyone yeah know? agreed and it like it's even supporters even people yeah. coming in i see so many more people rowing in behind teams and got a family member involved they might never have looked at the ga yeah. before that um I actually had a funny of a family friend who lives down in kerry and they actually made contact with me his daughter was going for an underage carry team for the first time ever and kind of got to talk her through, I suppose, the trials and yeah. I suppose kind of building the confidence and, you know, sticking to the basics, all them things. But it was actually a lovely moment um, or time kind of spent with somebody that we might not know each other very well, but it's lovely that somebody even down your yeah. neck of the woods yeah. come up and ask yeah. a couple of questions. I suppose it reminds you of the privileged position yeah. we're in. Um, so I'm wondering... I'm sure there's been moments that has, has somebody come to you or have you had an opportunity to kind of, I suppose, use the position as a Dublin footballer to support or help somebody else on, even yeah. outside of a GAA journey? Yeah, I think it's probably something you underestimate. I think as players sometimes just the little things um, and how it can impact, uh, particularly on, on younger on younger kids um, who are in the GAA or even kids that aren't in the GAA, but just... Yeah, I suppose small touches of, of like 
checking in on kids that have um, been going through a tough time and in the club or in, in schools. My, um, my mother's an SNA in, in the local school, so she'd have a good kind of ear on the ground of what's going on there. And she's always be kind of asking, would you do this? Or kind of sign a jersey for a kid or write a thing on a note for a kid and that kind of thing. And uh, as players, sometimes you think, like, oh, look, everything's it's just kind of sport and there's bigger things to life. And you kind of, but you can still kind of forget that, like, the end of the day to, to a lot of people to kids and even to older older members of the community like it's it's not just sport it's it's more than that to them and the, the kind of little touches and um, little interactions like that can help a lot so yeah i think they're probably the most magical parts of it all to be mm-hmm. honest um again very fortunate to get to do bits and pieces like that too and it might just be a birthday card or as you yeah. said a jersey or whatever but the value that bit of time has i suppose for another person is is, is class um i'm sure you're this is long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, the exact same. Yeah, I suppose. Look, and there's times when, whatever, maybe you're after losing a game, or maybe you're busy or with the family or whatever, and someone comes up to you and asks you to do something, and and I suppose you're conscious that it's only going to take you maybe twenty seconds or thirty seconds to sign it or to do the video or whatever, and that that kid or that person will have that for the rest of their lives, you know. So um, it's just trying to be conscious of that. And look, I suppose while we're while we're of course we know role models. Um, you're still not going to be perfect. There's going to be days maybe where you don't sign something where you just you just don't have the time. Um, but it's trying to be conscious of that that thing. I always just try and keep it in my head that this is only going to take me thirty seconds, and this person's going to have it for for however long. So um, yeah, it's it's and I suppose it's just as you said, it's nice to be in a position that that, that kids look up to you too. Do you know? Yeah, I think so. And you touched on a really important point too is that the imperfection of it all. Yeah. People are going to look up at Paul. They're going to look up at David, and they say. Them fellas must be perfect to be in the situation they are to be man to match, all Ireland winners. All of these things they're saying, them guys must be perfect. And I'd say, be safe enough to say that nobody sitting here. We're probably far from it, do you know. And as much as you do want to be a role model, we have our own imperfections. We make mistakes all the time. Um, I certainly make loads of them, but that that's okay. I suppose for all the young ki- kids that look up to know that they don't have to be the best at everything. They don't have to be perfect every day of the week. Um, but they can still be successful. They can still, they can still do the right things. On the topic then of of rivalries, I think Kerry Mayo is definitely a big one that that I'd uh, I'd love watching over the years as an outsider. I definitely think something that the neutral has always gotten gotten up for as well. Um, one of the recent games is had out here in the the twenty two league final. I thought was um, a good battle between you, <laughs> if we can call it if we can call it that. What was the what was the game plan going into into that game? Oh jeez, yeah, not probably one of the one of the better memories. We've had a good few battles in fairness to Kerry, um, some good days out too, uh, thankfully. But yeah, the twenty twenty two league game is one you wouldn't mind forgetting. Um, we came. I'm trying to think tactically. I'm not uh, all that savvy, but we. I think we went attacking. I think we went all out um, and committed to to trying to go at them. From what I remember. Um, we pushed up, we pushed hard, and I was one on one with David. We <laughs> I tried to man mark him, um, and it just simply didn't work out that day. Um, I think tactically, yeah, we just went for it. It was all guns blazing, attacking football, and we just got punished. Mm. We got punished on the long ball. Um, I won't lie, it's not the most comfortable place in the world to be in <laughs> inside no, that no. 45. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's the game you play, and like that, we've we've got it right other times. Mm. Been down to uh, Kerry last year, played in the championship, got it right. We tore out a good battle there, and um, so it's always a good clash. In fairness, it's always a good clash. Um, yeah, like like Patrick said, I suppose that, like we've, we we generally do meet each other every year, um, whether it's league or championship, and they're always tight. Just a league final in particular, I suppose. While it was a big game in Crow Park, there's still a sense that it's a league final and the shackles probably come off a small bit more. Um, do you know, I don't think if it was a championship game, it probably wasn't going to be, it was never going to be as open as that, and we've seen that. No. Um, but yeah, they're great battles, I suppose. Like, the thing is, management changes, players change, so there's no two games that are the same. One day a team will drop off, one day we'll drop off, one day we'll really go for it. I suppose it depends just the, the stage you're at in the season as well, and whether you're after being successful or not. Um, but yeah, like I suppose they're the battles you relish. Um, looking forward to those big championship days that, that bring out the crowds. Um, they're, they're the reason we play really, aren't they? Like? Yeah, absolutely. And even though, like I said, that game didn't go the way we wanted it to, I still enjoyed it to yeah. some in, in a weird, weird way. And you know, it was, um, it was a good experience nonetheless. And like I said, we've had some class battles 
same with with yourselves. Is there any is there any ones that stand out to you? Any rivalries you like playing with Dublin or even watching outside of it? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, outside of it, I think that, that those Kerry Mayo battles, I think, have been brilliant. The one that stands out for me was that one down in Limerick in uh, in twenty fourteen. Um, it was just, I think, the the smaller kind of ground made for um, a particularly kind of brilliant atmosphere. It was great weather, great game as well, and um, it being the kind of a, a replay of the, the semi final as well. So I think that made for um, for something magical. I think for for own, my own kind of rivalries. Um, I love the kind of the 2017 final out here as well. Probably another one that kind of made me feel probably slipped away. The Kerry ones we talked we talked about already, um, and then even kind of more recently now, I think that the last uh, couple of seasons, even the likes of Derry, with them coming coming very very strong again, I think that's been brilliant for for uh, for the game and for the championship. Um, that league final on here a few weeks ago, I think was uh, was 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 great. Certainly for the neutral, I think we've already spent. Few hours already, maybe going through all the kind of the blunders we made on the day. But yeah, I suppose that's what kind of makes it special. Is they're the kind of days you you want you want to play for. You want to be playing these kind of tight games, and um, yeah, hopefully more of them to come now. It's all anybody wants, doesn't it? Like as a player, as a supporter, you just good hard hitting games that they go down to the wire. Mm. Away from football, let's uh, go to a parallel universe for ourselves. David Clifford is no longer a footballer. If you could play in a world final, cup final, whatever, what would it be? What sport? Where, where's the venue? Set to see. Um, yeah, it's a tricky one, I suppose, especially when I'm interested in so many different sports. Because it's current at the moment, and this World Snooker Championship is ongoing. Maybe the the, the Crucible final. I suppose snooker is probably not the most exciting sport for for young people to watch. But I just love how tense it is. Um, you know, the quiet arena. Um, just a 1v1 battle when you're sitting down, you have zero control over what the other player is doing. Um, so maybe the snooker, world snooker final, or then if in a parallel universe Ireland got themselves back into a better position in the soccer, maybe a World Cup final with Ireland as well. I suppose just like, Ireland haven't had any success throughout my life, but even in was it 2016, Euro 2016, when they won those couple of games, I remember it was in the middle of my leaving cert. And the buzz around the place was huge, and that was only winning a couple of group games. So mm-hmm. maybe playing in the World Cup final for Ireland is that. I probably go and do it now when you're, yeah. when you're tired. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, what about yourself, Paul? Yeah, I suppose the younger soccer fan in me would, would love something like that too. Um, growing up, as a, soccer was always kind of my, my first sport. I was a Man United fan. I am a Man United fan, but it's been particularly difficult <laughs> yeah. this season. But I think that it's something I've gotten more into kind of recently is golf. Do you play a bit of golf? Is that, are you a golfer? No, no. no it's, um, Everybody else is, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it yeah. doesn't kill you, it'll save you, I feel. Sometimes just uh, it's, I just love the, the kind of days out, putting the phone away. Being out in, in, in the fresh air and then kind of having, having a bit of fun with friends um, and then watching recently there, watching the, the, the likes of the Masters um, and seeing what Scotty Scheffler is doing. Like that's, it's just fantastic, it's amazing and just to be, uh, be coming down the home stretch um, in, in a major tournament like that I think would be, would be hard to beat. What nice. about yourself, Porrick? Definitely not golf anyway. I can appreciate it though and yeah. I can respect it. Uh, <laughs> I just I don't think I have the, the patience or the skill set. Uh, I'd chase adrenaline now if it was anything, but you know, mm. you touched on being a soccer head. I was all basketball for a very, very long time. All basketball, loved it. It was huge in Balna, um, mm. and I pursued it heavily underage. And then, um, similar to yourself, actually, when the kind of minor football comes around, you end up kind of diverting away from it. So, if I could get maybe another seven or eight inches height and uh, go over and play in uh, NBA Finals Game Seven, absolutely. Yeah, why not? Yeah. So we've got a snooker player, a golfer, <laughs> and a basketballer. Do you know about that, lads? Wish you luck. You can all dream. <laughs> Is there any players in particular or anybody that stands out to yeah, you that you look up to? I suppose, yeah. Like being, I was a Celtic fan growing up. Um, Celtic team I, I kind of started following was just kind of towards the end of the Henry Clarkson time, so he would have been one of them. Um, probably... They had a, a, a winger, Nakamura was his name, he was Japanese, oh, yeah. that, another lefty maybe, that was why I was drawn to him. Um, he scored a couple of free kicks against United, I remember they always stood out. That was kind of when I got my love for Celtic, so he was probably my, when, actually lucky enough to get over a couple of times, he got a hat-trick, one of the games that was over at as well, so yeah, he ticked a lot of the boxes for me at the time. Yeah. There's the guy. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, Growing well, yeah. up, obviously, United fan, I was always kind of drawn to Roy Keane. My dad was a uh, was mad Roy Keane fan. Um, he, he was growing up watching the likes of George Best, and so that's how he became a United fan. And then he kind of drilled that into me, and, and Roy Keane became um, a bit of a hero of mine then. Um, I used to play tennis a bit when I was younger as well, and loved uh, loved watching Roger, Roger Federer in his prime. Just the, the, Nadal fan. The, the Nadal, was it the lefty again? Yeah, but even that rivalry is it? Yeah, that's something that just kind of draw, draw drew people to to the sport probably that otherwise mightn't have been. And um, but yeah, Federer, um, just the kind of the calmness I thought was was always just so so striking. Like no matter what kind of stage of the game it was, whether it's kind of won a point, won a game, lost a point, lost the lost a game, I think that steadiness was just was so impressive. Um, then his graciousness and kind of victory, I thought it was always something remarkable. Um, then, but back to back to golf, I love, the, the, even Shane Lowry now is a golfer, I love his kind of, just his attitude to the game and the sport and the passion he has, how he celebrates the wins that he's had, I think it's, uh, it's, it's been great to see, so. Yeah, yeah, those are those are the few I I pick. What about yourself, Paul? He's a cool cat in fairness. Yeah, he's gas. Um I just hate him, but I just don't really watch sport and never really did mm. in a weird way. I watched a bit of basketball. Um never really followed it uh, too closely. Would play everything but never uh, focused in. Did watch a bit of United now in my years. My young mm. lad is, is is supporting them too, so I feel your pain. <laughs> he goes through it every weekend. The blood pressure rises. I would probably just thinking here now, think back to, to Ronnie, uh, you go back to a snooker there, always admired that man. Um, mm. Again, kind of the same reason for uh, as Shane Lowry. Absolutely at the top of their game, but more just his attitude, his person, yeah. his character. I've always found him very interesting and entertaining, so I think he's going to get the nod from me, from me today. He's a flawed genius, really, isn't he? Like, um, but yeah, Jesus, yeah, he's, he's just Great a great description like, of yeah, a man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>